thing as having three pieces if you only cut it into six pieces. If I took a cake and cut it into 12 pieces, and I gave you six pieces of it, you would have this much cake, right? If I took that same cake and cut it into six pieces, and gave you three of them, it's the same amount of cake, right? Same amount of cake. You just got more pieces. But they're smaller if I cut it into 12 than if I cut it into three. So that's what it means about being proportionate. It's the same thing, the same amount. So knowing that, If one of these numbers is missing, and I know that this times this has to be the same as this times this, can't you figure it out? Because all I have to do is say, what is 12 times 3? 36. So I know that 6 times something has to give me 36 as well. And that lets me know that that number is 6. If I didn't know, I'd have to say 36 divided by 6, because that's what you're doing in your head. And sometimes you don't know the answer in your head. You have to actually divide, so you have to know this is what you're doing. I can divide it, and there's my answer. So like that's the easy shortcut to do it? That's it. That's the way to do it. And that's how we're going to do percent. Because with percent, once you set up this proportion and get the things, the numbers in the right place, there's going to be either these two will be here or these two will be here. So once I multiply these two, I know what these two have to equal. Or if I multiply these two, that tells me what these two have to equal. So I can always find out the missing number, okay? Let's look at some of those and, and practice doing that. Now in your book, it will give you several ways to find what's missing. It will talk about finding the part, finding the whole, finding the percent. But using this proportion, you have just one thing to learn to solve for any of them. So I wouldn't go through trying to figure out how to do each one separately, this proportion will show you how to do them no matter what. No matter which one you're looking for, you use that proportion and you'll be able to, to get that. Let's look at page 149 first. <coughs> right when percent starts. And it just gives you some information about a percent, and it talks about what I said is like a decimal or fraction, and it describes a part of a whole. Um, if you look on down, uh, and one thing, the one thing that you have to always remember about percent that you know is that the whole is 100%, okay? Always keep that in mind because it, knowing that the whole is 100%, there are things that you can problem solve and figure out. If I told you that the doctor paid, that the insurance paid 80% of my doctor's bill, you can get a picture in your mind and know that they paid almost all of it, but they didn't pay all of it, right? I know that 80% is more than half of it, right? So if my doctor bill was $200, I know they paid more than 100. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that you can figure out just by knowing that the main thing about percent 
is that percent is out of 100, and knowing that the whole thing is 100%. You can figure a lot of things, you know. You don't always have to use math to solve problems. You can solve problems just in words and then choose an answer if there's multiple choice. If there's multiple choice, some answers will be ridiculous. Again, if you knew they paid 80%, the bill was 200, you know they paid almost 200. If they give an answer of less than 50%, you know that can't be the answer because you understand 50% is half. You see what I'm saying? So there are things that you understand about percent before you ever start trying to solve a problem with it and don't forget those things that you already know. Uh, looking at exercise one there, it says, which of the following percents have a value greater than a half? Is 20 greater than a half? Mm -hmm. 40? Mm -hmm. 60? Yeah. 75? Yeah. 99? Then it says, which of the following have a value greater than one whole? Which ones are greater than a whole? 110, 110 and, and 200. You see what I'm saying? If it's greater than a whole, it's greater than 100%. And so there are things that you can figure out, okay? So like, how do you work percents once they go over 100? Percent, say it again? How do you work percents when they go over 100? <laughs> when they go over like a whole? How do you write more than 100%? If you have 110%, you have one whole and 10, oh, okay. so 10 just, more of, of one to take the 100. 110% would be more than 10 hundred. So it just leaves a hole in whatever else is part of another hole? Exactly. Just, just what you said, just what it is. You have a hole and part of a hole. And you have to understand it. I'm glad you said that. You have to understand that this is a hole and part of a hole. This is a hole and part of a hole. You see? This is a hole and part of a hole. They all say the same thing. So 200 is just two holes. That's it. 200% is two holes. That's right. That's right. Exactly. And things are marked up 200% in retail. That's when you get to 200% a lot of times. I buy something for a dollar. I don't want to just sell it for a dollar. I want to sell it maybe for two dollars, you see. So I got 200% back. I got 100% back when I got that dollar back. You see what I'm saying? 100% of my investment is a dollar. 200% gives me some profit. So the majority of retail sales for 200%? No, I wouldn't say that. They couldn't. They couldn't. They wouldn't make a living. They don't make. But they don't make that much off of it. But, but they do make a percentage off of it. They're gonna make a percentage of that. So they're gonna sell it for a hundred and some percent. You see what I'm saying? Because they're gonna at least sell it for what they bought it for. Then they're gonna, you know, so you're just paying that, you know what I mean? The, the profit they're making is just that percent. They're not making 110%. They're just making a 10% profit. The 100% just pays them back what they paid for it. Okay? So you understand you're getting that picture there. Um, on page 150, it talks about changing a percent to a decimal, and we talked about that. On the uh, example on 151 shows you to change a percent to a decimal, you just divide by 100. Move the decimal point back two places. So 45% becomes 0.45. 8% back two places becomes 0 0.08. You see that? Anybody see that? Don't get confused with the holes and parts. 37.5% is still 37 and a half out of 100. It's not 37 and a half dollars, it's 37 and a half cents. When it's 37 and a half percent. So it goes back two places, don't worry about the fraction, the fraction just stays. You take the decimal back from the whole number two places. People get confused about that. 250%, like you said, is just two and a half. You see, 2.5 back two places. 200% would just be two, two holes, okay? So they have you having some practice uh, with that, but again, what you have to remember there, the thing that you have to memorize is that you have to move the decimal point back two places to change a decimal, I mean a percent into a decimal. That's what you have to memorize, okay? Again, they, they show you example at the bottom. Um, I 
changing a decimal to a percent. So you're just going backwards. You're going to move it two places to the to the uh, left to change a percent to a decimal to change it back to a percent. You're going to move it two places to the right. So 0.25 becomes 25 percent. Still 25 hundredths, you see? Still 25 out of 100, except as a decimal you write 25 hundredths, decimal 0.25. As a percent you write 25 out of 100, 25 percent. Still means out of 100. 0.6 moves over two places, 60 percent. Not 6 percent. 6 percent would be 0 0.06. We'll change to 6 percent. This is 60. When you see 0.6, that's not six pennies, that's six dimes. It's in the tens place, the tenths place. The, the one that's really confusing is on with the four one four. What's the confusion? You're doing the same thing, move it two places. Did you do anything different there from with the other ones? All you did was just the fourth was there, the fourth stays there. So how did it, how did it become four one four? Because that's the number that they put down. What do you mean, how did it become? Well, you can have a fourth of another thing. Fourth, you can have a fraction of anything. That's what you have to understand. They could have written it all off 0 0.0425. You understand, like, what if it's like some weird random number like that? Like, like what are the steps for that? Same steps as for the rest of us, what I'm Just telling two, you. Two steps over and that's it. That's it. Have they done anything different? But what if it's on a zero? What if? 